Hi, my name is Monica, and I am the artist that created the Mermaid Tavern mural in Thousand Oaks, California. The story of the making of the Mermaid Tavern mural is quite amazing. It is so full of love and synchronicity. I almost find it hard to believe that some of the things actually did happen that I'll be talking about here in the movie, but these are factual things. They did actually happen, and um, they serve as an example of the love that can happen between community and that each of us have the opportunity to influence and spread love wherever we go. So I thank you so much for watching and am so grateful to have been a part of this experience. When people ask me what type of artwork I do, it is never an easy question. I have worked in so many different mediums. I paint, I sculpt, I sew, I write, I sing. Really whatever it takes to make that expression happen. I think sometimes people make the mistake of defining art or an artist by the specific medium that they choose to use most often, when in fact it's the belief that's behind the artist, the way of thinking, that is more important in what they create. I've created fantasy creatures of different kind for most of my life, whether they were mermaids or fairies. They always had some kind of twist to them. They were never typical, as with most of my work. No, no, no. Watching it unfold. I love to collaborate with other creative people. This is a place that I worked in Newberry Park called Animal Makers. It was a wonderful place. We created creatures for commercials and films. What you're looking at here is the work of a friend of mine, Alan Holt, who creates professional mermaid tails. He creates them out of silicone in exquisite detail and it brings such joy and wonder to so many people. Here's a photo of my friend Denise Stevens with her product, The Bead Pro. She's completely changing the way people look at the beading industry. Here is a photo of my mother, Cindy, and her husband, Steve, with her characters that she created for her washable produce bags which are helping to reduce plastic waste nationwide in stores and help our environment and oceans stay clean and clear. The truth is, no artist is an island and all the work that they create is influenced by their community and their friends. And then in turn, the work influences even further those that view it and appreciate it. This is Esther and Ali. They own the clay studio in Thousand Oaks. That's where I got my clay for the sculpture. This is Baxter's Salon in Thousand Oaks, which is owned by a friend of mine who is an artist that contributed the beautiful shimmering glass to the mural. This is my friend Casey, who owns the record outlet in Thousand Oaks and his contribution to the mural was just making me happy and laugh all the time, and that is huge. This is Matt Shriver, my sweetheart and constant companion to all the adventures that I drag him into, <laughs> sometimes reluctantly and sometimes with joy. He drives me around to all those places where I meet all these artists and wonderful people like this lady that did this painting here in the back room of a business in the bathroom. I just love that. So many inspiring people that it 
prompted me to create a radio show in 2008 called Inspiring People Radio. So when people ask what goes into a work of art, it really is a lifetime that goes into it, a lifetime of the influences of the people and the ideas around us. Watching it Stories being shown, gonna make my own so on a day like many others of wandering around the town and following my intuition, I saw this sign for the Mermaid Tavern coming soon, and I got chills. I knew that somehow I was meant to be involved. So we talked with the management at the Mermaid Tavern, wonderful people, and decided we were going to go ahead with the mural. And the mural would be a reflection of the story of the Mermaid Tavern and its history being a place in London, England, a pub called the Mermaid Tavern, where Shakespeare would go with his artist friends and they would collaborate on the different projects that they were doing. The Mermaid Tavern was so popular in London that it inspired a poem by John Keats called Lines on the Mermaid Tavern that goes like this. Souls of poets, dead and gone, what Elysium have ye known? Happy field or mossy cavern, choicer than the Mermaid Tavern. Have ye tippled drink more fine than mine host's canary wine? Or are fruits of paradise sweeter than those dainty pies of venison? O oh, generous food, dressed as though bold Robin Hood would with his maid Marian sup and bows from horn and can. I have heard that on a day mine host signboard flew away. Nobody knew whither till an astrologer's old quill. To a sheepskin gave the story, said he saw you in your glory, underneath a new old sign, slipping beverage divine, and pledging with contented smack the mermaid in the zodiac. Souls of poets, dead and gone, what Elysium have ye known? Happy field or mossy cavern, choicer than the mermaid tavern. So we wanted to have that influence of Shakespeare in the mural and therefore chose to have the male figure in the mural resemble Shakespeare himself. This is a picture of the initial sketch that was done for the mural. So I knew the mural would not be like any other mural. It would not be flat and would not be made out of plaster or some other kind of typical material that might be used in a mural. This is an outfit I made for LA Fashion Week out of recycled items from a coffee shop. And the paper skirt is made out of coffee cups cut in half, while the sleeves are the coffee cup sleeves themselves. All the jewelry to go with the outfit was made from recycled coffee grounds as well. So you can imagine that the mural would not be anything typical. I decided that fabric would be a really unique medium and would be perfect for its ability to shimmer and shine. Now that I had the concept in mind, it was time to go out and do my favorite part, and that was to hunt for materials. I've always loved a good treasure hunt, and it was recently that I actually realized that all of my very favorite movies have something to do with treasure hunting. So in modern treasure hunter fashion, I headed out to the nearest garage sales. So on Saturdays, I was out hunting for treasure at garage sales, 
Well, on Sunday, I had been led to this little non-denominational church called Unity of the Oaks, and they had a large group of artists and creatives and wonderful music, and they were having a festival, a music celebration, that just happened to be having a theme of Under the Sea. So the intention for the music festival was to raise money for Mana, the local food pantry. And it worked out so wonderfully because what we did is coordinate. I had promised the mural would be done around the beginning of April or so. And it perfectly coordinated with the time that the event was. So we brought the mural over to the music festival at the Hillcrest Center for the Arts let people know where they could find it in the future at the Mermaid Tavern, and once the festival was over, we transported it over and mounted it on the wall at the restaurant. Everyone was so thrilled about it. The synchronicity was just amazing. It seemed like everywhere I turned, there was some kind of association with the project. I was seeing mermaids everywhere. I was seeing Shakespeare everywhere. At the garage sales, it was absolutely incredible because I was running across all of the things that were specifically pertinent to the project. Like I, at one garage sale I went to, I got a bag of shells and I got just all different sparkles and fabrics and everything that I needed. This is a group of women that were at the sale and I, I shared with everyone that I met in my travels that we were doing the mural for the Mermaid Tavern and it was just a great way to not only get the word out about the Mermaid Tavern but to get everyone in the community involved in the project. Everyone was so excited about it. So this is another one of those amazing but true stories. We had gotten back from a yard sale and had an empty box with a calendar that happened to be in the bottom of it and I pulled up the calendar and it had kind of a pattern on the front, nothing to do with mermaids, but I said to Matt, what do you want to bet that I'm going to flip through this and we're going to find some kind of mermaid? And sure enough, for the month of February, this is what we saw. Unbelievable. Take a little peek at that little spacecraft up in the sky. I thought that was kind of random and interesting. And the synchronicity just kept on coming. I got a call from a girlfriend while I was working on the project, and she said, you have to listen to Doreen Virtue. And Doreen Virtue had been speaking some truths about some things that were very powerful. And so I had been listening to her um, about four or five times as of late at the time. And I listened into the show that day and just happened to get in on the call. And here's a listen to that. Uh, let's, this is interesting. Let's go to line seven and speak to Monica. Hey, Monica. How's it going? Hi, Doreen. Thank you so much for taking my call. And sure, sweetheart. And thank you immensely, immensely for your integrity. Mm-hmm. It, it really shifted something within me that I have been spreading out to the people in my circle and hopefully on and on from there. Good. Well, the time is now. The time is now. Someone asked me, this reminds me, a couple of people said, why are you saying there's no more time for going back to school? And what I really mean is there's no more time to delay our purpose. You can definitely still go to school, but don't wait to do your healing work till you're done with school. So thank you for teaching that to people in your class. And it really goes back to detoxing your body, your mind, your environment now. Yes. Yeah. And I see that you're you're helping people with, with creativity, which is also very, very important mm-hmm. as a way of opening up the heart chakra. And the heart chakra is the portal for all this new energy coming through. Well, it's amazing how it, it really reflects with that truth. It does come down to that truth because there are a lot of, I work with children, and there are a lot of even small children that adopt these limiting beliefs in regards to creativity, but it's really in regards to everything. So they have these, um, they'll say, lies that they have on top, these stories that that hinder 
the solutions. And I've, I've found a strong parallel with the creativity and solutions in our environment and in our life and how we can... I was talking to a friend about abuse, you know, what abuse is, and that's when you go to one source again and again, and you can't imagine the alternative. So with relationships right. or environment or anything, so... Beautiful. Monica, you've got some beautiful insights. I really appreciate that. I hope you're blogging about this, too. You know, I, I've been a bit, but I will be more. Okay. Post, please <laughs> yeah. post them on my, um, my Facebook page, too, because... You know, a, this is a good forum for people to get the parallel that you're talking about, and it all goes back to empowerment, is what you're saying. So yeah. that you've got you've got the power to create. You don't have to worry. You know, is it perfect for sale, or is it going to make me money, or be, you know, do I am I drawing inside the lines? And the same with can I help the world? It's either you give up or, and you don't even try, or you you say I'm doing this. I yeah. I'm powerful. I can do this. And so teaching the children is such a part of that. And I want to thank you so much for your role in doing this Monica that's beautiful and I can feel your I can feel your power and when you're empowered it it lights the candles in other people whose lights are dim so uh, you yeah. really you know got your ripple effect is amazing is what they're showing me uh, yeah good I, okay. I feel your angel thank you thank you you're so, welcome so much I, I got to run. I want to do a blue light meditation on everyone before the end of the show today. But I want to thank you and everyone who's calling in and everyone on Facebook. Um, if we could have some meditation music, please. Now, that was all wonderful. But what was even more synchronistic is that it's now 2013 in the summer. And in the winter, at the end of 2012, I received a book in the mail from a good friend of mine, Mermaids 101. And the book was written by Doreen Virtue. And my girlfriend said the book had just come out. So that means that around the time of the completion of the sculpture, or when I talked to Doreen Virtue on the phone, she had been just finishing up the book Mermaids 101. I had no idea that Doreen Virtue had a passion for mermaids. No, no, no. I'm watching it. So I started the mural with the faces, as I like to meet the people that I'm going to be working on. I started by sculpting the faces out of a gray clay and ended up casting them in a mold that I made from the original sculpture. I sculpted the faces and then painted them and then the back of the heads I built up with fabric. The hair on the man is made from pieces of cut felt, while the hair on the mermaid is made from pieces of wool. The backdrop that they were mounted on is stretched fabric over a wooden armature, which was created by my ex-husband, who so kindly exchanged his work for a fish purse that I had made that he thought that Pink would love. His best friend's daughter is the guitarist in Pink, and he just thought Pink would fall in love with it. So that was really a win-win exchange for me. So in order to create those beautiful ringlets that you see on the mermaid, I wrapped strands of wool around drumsticks that I got from a garage sale, of course, and added a little bit of color to them as well, inspired by my beautiful daughter, Sarah, and that is or was her actual real pink hair. Now, in the beginning, when I had talked to the hostess at the Mermaid Tavern, I asked her, now what is it that you throw out the most of here at the restaurant? And she told me those were the clear plastic beer cups. And I said, perfect. And I took a look at them and I thought about it and I thought, okay, I'm gonna make scales out of these. So Bob, the very sweet manager at the restaurant helped me to gather up the beer cups and I ended up cutting them out, each one individually, and then put a coating of beautiful metallic 
green, a moss green fabric on it so it looked like an actual mermaid scale. The understructure for the mermaid tail and other parts on the mural are memory foam. So they're going in style, courtesy of the local body shop that had some extra scrap that we benefited from. No, no, no. I'm watching it unfold. After mounting the scales one at a time onto the tail, I then came to the fin part and used some pieces of large transparent paper taped together to eyeball about what size I would need the tail to be. Then I took it onto the ground and traced some beautiful aqua fabric that would be the under fabric beneath the uh, transparent scales and fin and sewed them together and stitched in those grooves and lines to give it that that fin-like appearance. It came out really beautifully. This is the beautiful glass that I got from my friend Alex. And the wonderful side effect of this is in the restaurant when the lights flicker th from the fans, it gives this shimmery movement like effect it's so beautiful no, no, no. those shimmering hair accessories that you see on her head were the trims of a pillow that i had they were teardrop green and they looked like this shimmery seaweed it was just wonderful pretty much anything lying around had the potential of being woven into the mural at that time. <laughs> Nothing was off limits that would fit perfectly into the mermaid mural. What few people realize is that little ship off in the distance in the mural is actually a piece of plastic 1980s retro jewelry that I had sitting around in my jewelry container in the restroom. It came to me at an opportune moment and um, I sprayed it black and you would never know, but it's a little ship off in the distance on the horizon. It just was so perfect. So these next pieces that you'll see being worn by both the man and the mermaid are necklaces called scroll necklaces and they are a creation of mine. Several years back I created them as a carrier of intentions or prayers or poems or wishes or whatever it is that you want to carry close to your heart and I sold those nationwide and they were very powerful tools I I still carry mine and wear mine and of course I had to make sure that my sculptures wore them as well the ones that you're seeing in the picture here were created for Gail and Oprah and were sent out into the world person to person with the intention that eventually they would reach them. I haven't heard back yet that they have, but I still hold out hope that someday they may reach them. This is another small but very synchronistic thing. I have these fantasy stacks of papers that I've used for the scroll necklaces and the papers themselves were so meaningful to me, the designs were so beautiful that I actually sent scroll necklaces to the designers themselves from the company that created these papers. So when I went to pull the paper out of the stack from the papers for the scroll necklaces, without even seeing, this is the one that I pulled from the stack. True story. It's, it's hard to believe, but it's true. So meanwhile, back at church, the music fest had completely sold out, and that was exciting news. I had gone out to go to the car, and when I got out to the car, I had a flat tire, and I couldn't believe it. I was so bummed out, and then I went up to the tire, and, <laughs> and here in the tire, of all things to get stuck in the tire, I looked down, and there's this 
big fake artificial earring, but but like glass or something, still shimmery. And I went, wow, what a thing to create a flat tire. And I plucked it out of there after taking a picture of it, of course, and I brought it back. I took it out of its mounting and I used it as the final accent inside the mermaid's belly button. So that is where that mermaid belly button accent you see, that's where it came from. Cool, huh? So now we were off to take the sculpture to the music fest and it started to rain. So fortunately we had some large pieces of plastic tarping that we used to bring it over there. My ex-husband again helped us out with the truck and I just love this story because when we got there, there were some touch-ups that needed to be done a few painting things on the side and the three of us were out there with the paint brushes and it was just a really beautiful thing. The rain had stopped and we're out there, the sun had come out. It was just a moment. It kind of reminds me of when when you see those cats and dogs cuddling up in little pictures and it's just so not normal but it was just beautiful and I appreciated it so much. Just another part of the love and spirit of cooperation that went into this project. So the Music Fest was a great success. Everyone loved the mural. There's me standing in front of it so proudly. And the music was, of course, incredible. And Jillian wore her costume, her mermaid costume, as the MC and hostess of the event with pride. We had such a fun time making that together. What a beautiful mermaid she makes, doesn't she? She was swishing around and, and it made this really cool swishy noise so that we could make it slide and it was just perfect. And made her a shell phone case to go over her phone to accessorize her outfit and so after a successful event, we transported the mural over to the Mermaid Tavern restaurant and mounted it onto the wall to the left of the music stage. And you can go and visit it anytime and appreciate it and now the journey as well. So thank you so much for watching and being part of the experience. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.